Today we turn to chapter 15, and I'd ask you to read through the whole chapter at Luke chapter 15. It's a very well-known chapter. It's a chapter that God has used down through the centuries to draw so, so many people into a living relationship with himself. The religious people of his day found it offensive that Jesus would choose to spend so much time with sinners and with outsiders. So Jesus tells these three parables. And the church of today has so much to learn from these three parables and from the words of this chapter. Archbishop William Temple said this. He said, the church is the only organization that exists for non-members. And that sort of theme runs through all three parables and through every verse in this chapter. Jesus still welcomes to himself those who are at a distance from him. Jesus still draws to himself those who've gone away from him. His story of the lost sheep speaks of the shepherd going out looking for and searching for the sheep that had gone astray, the sheep that is lost. And in these verses, Jesus is tender and loving. He's caring and protective of the lost sheep that he uh, finds. And there's rejoicing whenever that lost sheep is found. Verse 7. So I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Similarly, the woman who loses one of her 10 precious wedding coins searches for that one lost coin until she finds it. And when she finds it, she throws a party, sharing her joy with friends and with neighbors because that precious coin has been found. Verse 10, just so I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Joy on earth and joy in heaven when those who are at a distance from God return to him and return into his loving, saving embrace. Christ's love, you see, for each of us. Christ's love for you and for me. Christ's love for those whom you love. Christ's love for all who are known to us and the many who are not known to us is an act of love. The love of God is an act of love. It brought him down from heaven to earth. It meant that Jesus left the glory of heaven, an act of love. An act of love that took him to the cross where he humbly rescued us from our sinfulness and paid the price, took the punishment for our wrongdoing. Rescued us, saved us from sin and from death and from hell. The father in the story of the lost son runs towards the son to meet him. The love of God is an active love. Verse 20. And he arose and came to his father, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced and kissed him. The love of God is not only an active love, but it's a deep, deep love. God didn't leave us to our own destructive, self-destructive ways. When we recognize that we've gone our way, that we've lived our lives without maybe any real reference to God, when we realize that life without God is meaningless, when we resolve to come home to God, when we repent, when we give our lives to Jesus, God freely welcomes us, wonderfully pardons us, and indeed there's a party in heaven a party in heaven. Listen to these words, verses 21 to 23. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. 
I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring quickly the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hands and shoes on his feet, and bring the fattened calf and kill it, and let's eat and celebrate. Verse 32. To the other brother, son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. It was fitting to celebrate and be glad, for this year, brother, was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. Folks, it really is time. It really is time. These are days for the church to get up and to go looking for lost women and for lost men, people who, who are without Christ and without hope. Let's find them. Let's bring them home and let's throw parties when they believe and when they give their lives to Jesus. Let's join with the angels and let's join with the saints above in celebrating as people come home and come back to Jesus Christ. And here's a little plea. No elder brother spirit please in our churches. None of us saying, look, what's all the fuss about? Uh, we don't want the focus, the focus to be over there. We'd rather that the focus was somehow over here. Let's not squabble about the clergy's time or the church's resources or the focus of our ministry moving to the one lost sheep. But let's go searching. Verse 4, what man of you having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it. Or similarly, the lost coin. Verse 8, or what woman having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and seek dil diligently until she finds it. Or the son who comes home it was fitting to celebrate and be glad for this your brother was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. Let's get our focus right. Let's get our focus right because Jesus came to seek and to save what was lost. Jesus came to seek and to save what was lost. Let us pray. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, we humbly pray that you would abundantly bless the efforts that are being made in our parishes to turn the people to more sincere repentance and a more living faith. Prepare many hearts to receive the seed of your word. Grant that that word may take deep root and bring forth fruit to your glory. So arouse the careless, humble the self-righteous, soften the hardened, encourage the fearful, relieve the doubting. Bring many souls in loving faith and self-surrender to yourself and visit your church with your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Just sit quietly where you are for a moment and ask the Lord to perhaps speak very particularly to you uh, and to me, showing you maybe even just one person, maybe more than one person that comes to mind when you think of the lost sheep or the lost coin or the lost son. And in this moment, Lord, show us the ones who are lost. And show us how, Lord, to welcome them home. And teach us how to love them and how to pray for them. And how to go looking for them. So tenderly, Lord, fill our hearts with the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Fill our lives with the love of God. 
and baptize us and fill us with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.